Hello, everyone. Welcome to CytosCon, Solana AI Send Greetings. And I have a talk about the Postgres community and what I learned doing interviews with the Postgres community. This project started about two years ago, beginning of 2020. And the first interview I did was with Letizia. And ever since then, I'm publishing weekly interviews with members of the Postgres community. Not only the well-known members you already know, all the developers, but this is aiming, or this is aiming to shine light on anyone in the community. Okay, quick note, who I am. Many people already know me. My name is Andreas. I am one of the founding members of Postgres Europe. I'm in a board of directors of Postgres Europe, we run a couple of conferences like Postgres Conference Europe, Postgres Conference Germany, which will happen in May in Germany, Fostem and Fostem PG Day. Uh, currently, I work for a company called Adjust in Berlin. I'm head of databases there, so we have around 1,000 Postgres databases, and I have a very great team working with me to keep all of these databases running. If you want to find my slides, you can go to my website or my blog. On the right side, there's a link to my writings and talks, and I will upload the slides for this talk on my blog there. You can also reach out to me on Twitter or on LinkedIn, or just find me on my blog. So here's my Twitter handle, it's a Sherbaum. I'm very active there. Uh, for today, you can also go to the Discord, for the CytosCon, and you can find me there. I will be online. So the agenda for today, I will tell you a little bit about this project, how it started actually, the background for it. I will give you a brief overview about the technical details. And then the majority of the talk is about what I learned when I interviewed this community. Okay, anyone knows what this building is? You have an idea? It's the Supreme Court of Cassatian in Rome, in Italy. It's near the Tiber River. Do you know this building? This is Castes at Angelo, also in Rome. So, and how is this connected to this talk? Well, in December 2019, beginning of 2020, we had a family vacation there and friends joined us, Magnus and Devin have been there. Here in this picture, you see me and my son out running on one day. When I go running, I have these ideas. I can think about projects I have laying around. And this is one of these days. I had this idea for how to bring more light onto members on the community. So we had a lot of fun, of course, in Rome. We did visit the Vatican. We did some great pictures in the city. And we also went to Devon's favorite place, the Hard Rock Cafe. And while I've been there, we discover. I pitched this idea, and Magnus and Devon helped me finding the right name for it and finding the right domain name. And then later when we came back, it took me like two more months to figure out all the technical details. But then end of February 2020, I started the first interview. Um, about end of January, I started asking a couple of friends, okay, can I interview you? And all of them said yes. And that's how this project started. As a technical platform, I'm using a static blocking engine, one of them, which is called Hugo. All the content is written in Markdown. So it's really static. I have a custom template for it, especially for handling all the previews I have. So if I did an interview with you, you know that I will send you a custom link to your interview before, so you can see how the interview will look when it's published. That's all built into this custom template. The content is all in a private GitHub repository. And whenever I commit something into this repository, it's auto-checked out of the web server. So it makes it very easy for me to publish new content there. Uh, for the interviews themselves, I have a Google Doc template, which I copy and send to whoever I'm doing interviews with. Um, there's a couple of questions in this template. Of course, anyone can just change the questions, leave questions out, add new ones, whatever you want. 
Uh, most people just go with the default set or a subset of the default set. That's fine. And then there's at least one round of reviews. And then if you're fine with the content, I create a preview, send you a link, how it will look like when it's published. And then sometimes there are a couple more changes back and forth. And then finally we agree, okay, content is fine, publishing is fine. And then I will queue in the interview. And then on every Monday, I do publish a new interview and also post the content to Planet because it's a blog and a couple of social media platforms. And in the background, I am to have like four to six interviews ready. So for once, I don't want to have too many open interviews at the same time because it would just mean that between the time you did an interview and I published the interview is too much time in between. So I don't want this. Well, I constantly have something to do here. It also means that on some platforms, I get many, many requests back from people I don't know, I've never heard of. You can see my LinkedIn invitation counter is just ever increasing. Maybe I come around and can contact all of these people if they are working with the, and in the Postgres community. I also have a very huge spreadsheet, which keeps all the data for all the interviews I have. Like what is the status for every interview? This is started, this is completed, are there open questions? And I have some additional overall data, like which countries are people from, which Postgres version did people start with. And then I have plenty of details for every interview, and you will see later what data I gathered. And then I have also a sheet with many interesting quotes from the interviews I found. So on the next slides, when I show you all the data, you will see quotes from members of the community, which I used here as a good example. Okay, let's go to all the data. Let's start with the big elephant in the room. I went over all the interviews and I checked how many people use Postgres or use PostgreSQL in their interviews. And I found that the Postgres instead of PostgreSQL. It's about 60% people using Postgres. However, only a very few people, six people actually, said in their interviews, okay, let's also change the name. So it looks like the majority is just okay with using either name, either Postgres or PostgreSQL, and don't really bother what name is used here. And with that out of the way, I currently have 383 interview people in my list for interviews. Uh, this is end of March when this recording is taking place. I have 176 interviews started, but only 111 completed. Uh, this means there are 65 interviews open. I'm looking at every one of you, if you have an interview started and haven't completed it, now it's a good time to do this. I also have six people who told me, okay, I'm not happy to be interviewed. That's fine. So, uh, whenever I interview someone, I give them a chance to give me new names for an interview. Sometimes I get the same name back I already interviewed, but many times I get new members from the community, which is a great chance for me to reach out to these people and find new candidates for an interview. But you can also send me an email to interview at postgresql.live. That's the website I'm using for the interviews and recommend someone for an interview. So far, I got 226 recommendations in total. So how many people get recommended? How often? We can see uh, I have 45 people who got recommended at least twice, uh, 10 people who got recommended three times, and I have one person who got recommended 12 times. Can you make an estimated guess whose person is it? who got recommended 12 times? Well, yes, it's of course Tom Lane. However, Tom Lane very politely declined and said, uh, please don't interview me, so we won't see an interview. How many people do recommend someone else? It's actually a great number, so by default, this template I sent out says, can you recommend three other people? 
So as you can see, the majority I get is actually three other recommendations. Some people don't recommend anyone, but the majority, majority goes with three people. But then we have also people who recommend four or five more other people. And the top I had is actually someone recommended nine other people. So that was a great input. Thank you. Where do all the community members come from? Make an estimated guess. You have a couple of seconds. The majority comes from the United States. It's 18 people so far in my interviews, but followed closely by France with 14 people and Russia with 11 people and then followed by India with eight people. It's actually a very good distribution we have across the world. And it's a total of 30 different countries I have. And for Russia, by the way, I have a couple of interviews where I was asked to hold them back until the current situation is resolved. So people are very well aware what's going on there. One of the questions I also ask is, what's the first Postgres version people used ever? And you can see there's a very good distribution across the years. So we have people joining the community, starting working with Postgres, almost with every single Postgres version. But we all have someone who started with Postgres before it was Postgres 95. And I recommend you to go and read the interview with Ellen Mustaine for it. It's a very good insight into how Postgres was before SQL was added. As part of the interview, we have text so people can add text to the interview. So we get cross links to other interviews. And the one thing which I like most about this feature is that the majority of text I get is actually for the community hashtag. So 16 people added community, which is by far the highest number I have. Then of course, we have a couple of conference, uh, conferences here. We have database, we have Postgres woman quite a lot. Uh, we have a com couple of company names, account names, open source is there. The one tag which I exclude here is PostgreSQL because it's included by default in every interview. So I don't add it to this list. Okay, how many people are using tags? So I have 268 tags used only once, 57 tags used twice and so on. And there's one tag which is used 16 times. We've seen it before, it's community. So maybe I can do better asking people to add more text and better text to their interviews and maybe also look, go back and see what other text people are using. I made a good guess what uh, gender people have. And as you can see, and Louise is actually right here in her opinion, uh, so the community is not really diverse, not as good as it should be. And I think we can do better. So I have 16 interviews from women and all the others are from men. And maybe we can do better as community and add more female community member or other community member. So this slide is supposed to show a picture of a sailing boat. Someone promised it to me, but I didn't receive it in time. But the question for you, how many community member like sailing? Well, I was surprised seeing this number because we have five members in this community who did interviews with me who like sailing. And I didn't know that before. I only know from one person. And the most, the most uh, common activity, outside activity we have is cycling closely followed by hiking. We also have a very good running community. People like to go out and walking. And when there's walking, there's usually also photography involved. And there's some swimming and dancing, of course. So uh, people like to go outside, especially in the past two years where there were not many chances. <laughs> we also have activities at home. What do people do at home when they stay home with their family or for activities? And reading is a little bit better than movies. So I looked at all the interviews and did the numbers. 
if a couple of people doing uh, music or like music, listen to music, do music. I heard that we maybe will have a band in Berlin for PGCon for EU this year. We need to see about that. People also like cooking. And we have a couple of community members who really like to play chess. That was also surprising for me. I didn't know that before. And what's everyone's favorite drink? Of course, there's beer and coffee, same number. We have one person who really likes tea and a couple of people also like to drink wine. And all I have to ask for Pavlo, please don't take away steak devrim and the beer. <laughs> Where do we find people in this community? So if you want to reach out to people, of course, you can always go to mailing lists, but the mailing lists we have is all about Postgres and development and all the activities around Postgres. But if you want to reach people in other places for other activities, uh, the place to go is either Twitter or LinkedIn. With LinkedIn being a bit better here, but it always goes up and down a little bit when I add new interviews. So reaching out to on Twitter or on LinkedIn will actually give you the best response if you want to reach out to people in this community. Many people also like to write blogs, either their private blogs or company blog. That's what they mentioned. And yes, we know that many people are also on Facebook or on Instagram, but that's not something they like to mention. So it's their personal space, not something you can use to reach out to people. But what's everyone's favorite conference? Make an estimated guess. Yes, of course, it's PGConf EU. It's by far leading this list, closely followed by PGCon in Ottawa, actually. And then we have FOSTEM and Postgres Open and PG Day Paris almost at the same level here. Uh, this list for meetups actually includes all the meetups worldwide we have. So as there's a quite a lot. Um, we have a couple other conferences like Postgres Vision or PGConf DE Brazil who are well visited. And what's not shown here, we actually have 29 conferences in this list. So before every, the world went into the lockdown, we knew that at any month in a Postgres community, you have like at least two conferences going on. We as an organizers, we always had a hard time to find a week where we want to run a conference because we know there are so many other conferences at the same time and it's hard to coordinate. So we have a mailing list for that. So we aim to coordinate with all the other conferences we have. As you can see, many of these conferences are still around, going strong. We know that PGConf EU will come back this year, hopefully post them next year. Uh, PG Day Paris and Nordic PG Day just happened a couple of weeks ago. By the time this recording takes place, it was one week ago. PGConf DE is in May in Leipzig. And Brazil actually announced their call for papers. So if you want to go to Brazil, I think it's their winter. Call for papers is open. Go and submit a talk. And yes, CitusCon is not yet here because no one in this interview has talked about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but... What's everyone's favorite extension? There can only be one, and it's PG stat statements for everyone. So this one is really leading this list very high up, and then followed by PostGIS. So everyone doing any kind of geodata is loving PostGIS. Then we have a couple other extensions here. So I only picked the ones which have at least two mentions. You can see they're all more or less equal here from, from A to two. And congratulations to Citus. You actually made a list with five mentions. Well done. Okay, the last question, which is which turned out to be very controversial. Does Postgres have a very high or very low entry barrier? And we have split opinions because about one third of the community says the entry barrier to Postgres is actually very high. And about two thirds say it's a low entry barrier. And I think you have to look at this from where you're coming from. If you're a user of Postgres, then using Postgres over the years got really, really easy. 
we have Windows installers, and you just install a database, and it's up and running. Uh, it's packaged with all the major Linux and Unix distributions. You just do a package install, and it's up and running. So it's easy to do. If you actually want to get into development for Postgres, things are quite different. Getting a patch into Postgres is actually a very high barrier for you. There might be long discussions on a hacker's list, and it maybe takes weeks or months until you get something landed in Postgres, even with the patch everyone else wants. So that's actually a thing we hear quite often. How can this development process for Postgres made easier, also for new contributions? As a summary here, uh, we have, or I have plenty of data. There's not enough time to actually go over all of it. I will see that I will have another talk ready for one hour where I can go over more details and just pick the things which I thought are most interesting for here. Um, look out for another talk. I will update it every time I present it with new numbers and new quotes. Are there any questions? So if you have questions, you can, of course, go and find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is visible on my video here and on my one of the first slides I have. Uh, you can also reach out to me during this conference on the Citus Discord, and I will be there and answer questions about this talk. So thank you, everyone, and I wish you a nice conference.